nearly half of all U.S. adults are single today. That number has been steadily rising for several decades. Nearly 70% of men and about 65% of women were married in 1960. Today, it's just over 50% of men and around 50% of women who are married. Young people are getting married later if they get married at all. There are also people, of course, in unmarried partnerships, but I think that a lot of that really is people who are not ever going to be permanently partnered. 117.6 million Americans aged 18 and over never married, are divorced, or widowed. They're not single for the usual reasons that you hear. Oh, there's not enough marriageable men for women or any of those kinds of reasons. But instead, that they find single life fulfilling. As someone single living in a major city like New York, it's definitely very stressful when it comes to personal finances. You have the full burden on your shoulder. So I would say the majority of my friends who are single and live alone, they're very stressed about the cost of living. A 2023 survey revealed that the top three stressors for single Americans, excluding Gen Z, were all financial. 39% said they were stressed about the general state of the economy. 38% said it was their long-term financial future, while 35% blamed the effects of inflation. There's a lot of consternation, especially at early ages and later ages, with being single and, and independent and how much you might need to ask others for help, both you know, as an optional idea or as a literal idea to ensure you're going to be okay. So what's causing so much financial anxiety among single Americans? Singles tax is a newly coined term referring to the financial burdens that are uniquely incurred by single people. I definitely think there is a singles tax. It's much more expensive to be single than to be in a relationship. If you're single and living alone, you don't get the economies of scale. So instead of having a partner to split expenses with, you cover everything yourself. Take a look at South Carolina, which ranks right in the middle among all states in terms of cost of living. MIT calculates that the typical expenses for two working adults with no children total around $47,483 a year. By contrast, a single adult with no children has estimated expenses of $29,880 annually. That means a single individual has at least $6,000 more in expenses per year compared to individuals who are splitting their bills with their partner. I have to cover all of my living expenses, medical costs, travel expenses, food, etc. Like everything is on you. There's really no splitting the bill, which is what's so nice about having a partner or being in a relationship. Break down the typical expense even further, and you can see that nearly every type of expenses, apart from medical, is cheaper per person for couples who have the luxury of splitting the check. Maintaining your household costs a lot more money now than it did about five or 10 years ago. And when you're single, there's no one that you can share and spread those costs along with. The biggest expense among them is housing. A 2023 analysis by Zillow revealed that renters pay a singles tax of nearly $7,000 a year for living alone. And in major cities like New York City, that number can be as high as $19,500 a year. My largest expense is actually my housing. So my rent takes up the majority of my expenses. It's definitely challenging finding an apartment and securing housing in New York City as a single person because one, the rent is so high, so you have to make a certain amount of money to even qualify for an apartment, you know, on your own. The obvious reason that housing is a bigger share of single people's expenses is simply that there's one person living per housing unit versus two or more people living per housing unit. But I think it goes beyond that. Single people may be more likely to live in expensive cities like New York or San Francisco where we have housing crises. Housing in general has become a big problem around the country. And I think it is especially acute for single people in urban areas. The cost of living in New York City has definitely made me and my friends reconsider why we do live here and what we're actually investing in because if you don't have a lot of extra money to spend if you're spending it all on your rent and your bills and you can't really go out or you can't really enjoy the arts and culture and activities that are all around new york city why are you here 
Inflation has also played a major role in aggravating these expenses. It's really hard to control your housing expense and it's really hard to control your food expense because they are necessities. Things like clothing, entertainment, they have more variability. But you know, these fixed expenses really do contribute to that singles tax. And unfortunately, that's where inflation is hitting the hardest right now. Definitely this year, especially the cost of everything, food, travel, gas for your car, like everything has increased and that eats into your budget and eats into your savings account. But it's not just expenses that are stacked against single people. Financial advantages for married couples are written right into the laws of the land. The most prominent example is the income tax. According to MIT's calculator, the typical tax expense for a single adult with no children is about 44% higher than the split expense from two working adults with no children. It used to be that tax brackets were structured in such a way that if two people were earning money and then they combined their incomes, they would actually pay more taxes after they were married. This marriage tax penalty was largely eliminated for all but certain states and high-income earners following the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act under the Trump administration. There's really no longer a marriage penalty. The standard deduction is basically double the single deduction. The time that being married does benefit you financially is if you do have one spouse that earns more than the other. You have someone who's making 200,000 and your spouse is making 400,000. Now that does benefit you. This income gap could result in bigger tax breaks that are reserved for couples with children. If there's a disparity in income between spouses, now you may qualify for certain tax credits that you could not qualify on your own or get a higher amount, like the child tax care credit. The amount you get is dependent upon your income. Or if you're paying for child care, there's a dependent care credit. So there are certain credits that do benefit you if you're married and you bring your incomes together and one spouse has lower income than the other that now qualifies you for a specific tax credit and benefit. A 2023 survey revealed that 74% of singles dislike paying more taxes than married couples. And 79% said they'd like to see the government offer more tax breaks for single people. Why shouldn't we get tax breaks? And even one example, a married couple, they're more able to purchase a home because they have shared capital and that's a tax break in itself. Social security is another policy that favors those who are married you're able to, at times, take your spouse's social security benefit if it's higher than yours. So let's say during your lifetime, you earn $50,000 a year on average. Your spouse earned $150,000 a year. When your spouse passes away and you're married or you're married for at least 10 years, you now have the option of taking that higher social security benefit, even though it's not based on your income. When my married colleague dies, their social security can go to their spouse, or in some cases, to a whole array of ex-spouses. My social security goes back into the system. I can't say, give it to a close friend or a sibling or someone else who's really important to me. And so I'm basically getting paid less for the same work. All of these factors, along with the luxury of splitting the bill, makes it significantly easier for married Americans to both save and grow their assets. A 2019 study by the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis found that married young adults have greater median net worth and home ownership rates compared to single households. Between 1989 and 2016, a typical household with a married couple had three times the amount of net worth compared to households that were partnered or single. I do think it's easier for couples to build assets and there's one caveat I'm going to share there is that you both have a shared vision of what your goals are and you both have discipline. One of the things we've read in studies is that people tend to achieve their goals at a higher rate is if they have an accountability partner. So having a spouse or partner living with you in your household, watching you day to day, month to month, watching your spending does allow you to be able to reach your financial goals a lot more quickly. But being single also comes with its unique set of benefits. This idea of being single is extremely empowering to people, which is why they're willing to pay more to do it. Financial freedom that comes from being single is really awesome because I get to spend all my money on me. 
and my favorite person is me. So I save a ton of money on dates and money that I don't have to spend or gifts and things like that, or even travel and get to really invest in myself. And that's really nice. Or I can repurpose the money that I would use in dating or as a couple. I can spend that on my friends and family as well. So there's a lot of freedom with that. Nevertheless, certain policy changes can greatly improve the financial health of single Americans. Maybe a lot of people who are watching this are young single people. And I think for them, the biggest single thing is to get housing costs under control and make housing more accessible. Housing costs are really high. And it's also such a competitive market. There's so many people who offer these like full cash offers <laughs> for homes as well. So it doesn't even include you having a mortgage. So there's just so many factors that have made the housing market so challenging to purchase a home. Personally, I don't really see a future as a homeowner and I'm an optimist. The single biggest factor in why housing costs are too high in urban areas is zoning laws. These zoning laws benefit current homeowners who tend to be disproportionately married couples. That's the problem is that people who own homes know that the current system benefits them and they will fight, for example, multifamily housing. They will oppose that because it lowers their property values, even though it makes housing affordable for everybody else. There are several things that single Americans can do themselves to navigate around the singles tax. It's even more important for you to budget. Understand how much money you're making, how much money you're spending, where is your money going. You probably have a lot of fixed costs that you need to be aware of. Finding someone to split expenses with is one decision that will likely have immediate impact. According to Zillow, renters with roommates save $14,000 compared to single renters each year. Try your best to find a trusted partner, a trusted individual that you can share some of your expenses with, whether that is a commute, a home, meals, and try to make that habitual. I'm not telling you to maintain 30 rolls of toilet paper, but if you buy 30 and you share it with three friends, you do have that cost savings that you can share amongst each other. So think about yourself integrating into a community and identifying ways to help minimize some of your day-to-day -day expenses. Being single, sometimes it feels like it's a, a curse to people or the way like society positions it, it's like a bad thing. It's not, it's great. Like you have so much like life and freedom that you have. And I would just say, take advantage of it. Just know that you're a catch and you're gonna end up with someone and you're gonna be able to save money <laughs> and live a great life. But in the meantime, like enjoy your freedom, enjoy your friends, enjoy your family, explore, travel, try new things, pick up hobbies, but you know, really enjoy the fruits of your labor.